the mind wants to grab onto anything it can. If you want to call it the ego, the ego. It will even use all spiritual concepts, ideas, to grab onto life. And concepts are great to break concepts. Ramana Maharshi used to say, use one thorn to dig out the other thorn, then you throw this thorn away. This isn't about becoming clever. This isn't about knowing. in all honesty. It's about becoming a bit of a bozo, really. <laughs> about becoming a fool. Or a bit of an idiot. Because when all thought is let go of, or when all thought, it's not all thought goes, thinking still happens. But when the attachment to the thoughts, when they're not taken as serious anymore, they're just taken for what they are as thought. What is there to know? There is just this moment. There's just awareness. And life is just happening. And there's no intellectual ideas or commentary on life. It's just simply this. You're just simply watching life happening and thinking in that life happening can be used. You need to work out a sum. You need to think about what you're going to say to somebody or something like this. But it's not your interpretation of the world anymore. The interpretation of the world goes and the just is this. Just watching what's happening. And this is all you ever wanted. But people get into this subject, especially, especially non-duality, and they want to stay in that mind activity. They want to stay in the intellectual debates. There is no I, there is an I, there is no self. Consciousness is all, whatever those dialogues are. And that wanting to stay in that intellectual interpretation of the teaching is staying in mind and staying in ego. I like to say mind rather than ego. I don't know why, but this is my preference. So, but I know a lot of people would interpret mind as just thinking. When I say mind, I mean the thoughts which are thinking, but also man manifesting physically in the body. So when you, when you have a thought, you also feel it as, as well. This accumulation of your past thoughts and future projection. But anyway, back onto the subject of being an idiot. And all these words, these words that I'm saying aren't right. They're just what's popping out of this being at this very moment. And maybe they change something in somebody, maybe they don't. Maybe the story is that 
from this somebody will have a great awakening. Maybe from this somebody will be greatly disturbed. That's not in my control. That's no, there's no intention here to liberate anybody. I see everybody as liberated. These words just pop up. I'm no teacher. Speaking and recording is just happening. I can't see a student. I see everybody as liberated. <laughs> you become the stupid lover. You're in love with everything for no reason. Not in love with something because it gives you something. Because it's done something for you. You're in love with something because it is. Not because of some intellectual interpretation of the situation. Because it is. You're in love with what's happening. Always. Even if what hap what's happening is supposedly to the ego or to the mind terrible. Even if it's watching a kangaroo die, you're still in love with it. Not that you might not have the urge to go and help the kangaroo. Or do some energy work to make it easier for the kangaroo. But everything that's happening, you're divinely in love with. For no reason. Other than it is. It's only the mind. It's only the ego that ever tells you there's something wrong. And how do we know this? Because it's something we think. And we feel like we feel it too. Because the thought then manifests as a feeling. So, oh, this is wrong. This shouldn't be happening. But when the thought goes, the contraction, the emotions go, not that there's not sadness. You see the kangaroo dying and maybe you cry. You still feel. But again, I say again and again, you're not looking at the world through an intellectual concept. It's immediate. It's immediate. There's no second thinking happens. But there's no second interpreting. It's my phone going. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> Seeing Anna Wilson. <laughs> stupid lover. It's what we all are. She's going to be in the home, home line now. There is nothing to suffer about. It just is this, what's happening. And it's not that intellectual concepts won't come up to remove thorns, or that all this beautiful spirituality won't happen. I love it. I actually see it on the internet and I think how beautiful. Reiki, Chinese medicine, people even arguing about non-duality. Sometimes I laugh a lot at that, but... <laughs> Hello, Anna. Isn't that fantastic that my phone can tell me who's calling out aloud? <laughs> this isn't saying you just sit on a sofa all day. Action happens. 
Saving the planet might happen. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, because that would be another thought. It just is. It's when you attach to, ah, this is the right way. This is right. That's when it's egoic. I was with a lady at work the other day who, um, it was a clairvoyant and all afternoon she was having readings for me and it was beautiful. All this stuff coming up. It was beautiful. This moment rejects nothing. My walk away from subject uh, from situations. Nothing's seen as right or wrong. It just is. And that's where you fall in love. Anyway, I shall go and call Anna Weldon <laughs> back. I find it hilarious that my phone speaks to me like this. I mean, isn't it amazing? All of this. I think I've said this quote many times, but I shall say it again. We spend our whole life searching for the miracle. And what we fail to realise is life is the miracle. All of it 